In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. Now, I will be using a Samsung Galaxy phone in this video, but if you're using a non-Samsung Android phone, the steps might be slightly different. The first step, though, is to turn on your watch. So, with the buttons on the right side, you'll want to press and hold the top button until the Samsung logo appears. So, I'm pressing and holding and that was about three or four seconds and the Samsung logo has now appeared on the screen. So it's going to take a little while for the watch to start up and allow us to interact with it. So I'll go ahead and fast forward through this part to get to the next action step. Alright, so we get this little welcome screen with the animation telling us which watch we're about to set up, and it's directing us to swipe up from the bottom here, so I'll go ahead and do that. And now it's saying get started in the Galaxy wearable app on your phone. Now if you need to change your language, you can do so by uh, hitting this button here, and then you can scroll and choose whichever language you want. You can also tap here on accessibility and you can do things like um, have visibility enhancements and other advanced settings. I assume you can change like the font size, high contrast fonts, things like that, bold font, font size. So if you need any of those, you can do that before starting the full setup process. I'll go ahead and swipe back to get back to that first screen. So get started in your Galaxy wearable app on your phone. So if you've got your Play Store, you can go tap that and search for Galaxy wearable app. It should be a free app, so do not pay for an app. Um, but if you have this already installed on your phone, you can find the app here. It might be in your Samsung folder, or you can tap here to search for it. But this is what the icon looks like, Galaxy Wearable. So I'll tap on that to open it. And we're going to go ahead and tap Continue. And it says, allow Galaxy Wearable to find, connect to, and determine the relative position of nearby devices. So this will make it a lot easier to set up your device. So I'll go ahead and tap Allow. And so it's looking for the Bluetooth signal of this watch, and it looks like it has found it. So it's saying to check the number on your watch, confirm on your phone, the two numbers do match, so I will say confirm. Okay, and so it is downloading some software here onto my phone, and Looks like it's downloading the Galaxy Watch 6 Manager app, which is 174 megabytes. Thankfully, it's going pretty quickly because I am connected to my Wi-Fi. If you're doing this over your mobile data, it might take a little bit longer. And now we're asked to agree to two things here. You have to agree to the Samsung end user license agreement and the Samsung privacy policy. You can also agree to sending diagnostic data, but that is optional. If you want to read more of these things, like you want to read the privacy policy, you can tap here on details and you can read through the entire privacy policy as you wish. So once you are ready to agree, you can tap and get the blue check marks. Again, this is optional. You do not have to check that one if you do not want to. So make your choices here and tap continue. So it says allow Galaxy Watch 6 manager to access your watch. This app is needed to manage your Galaxy Watch 6. It will be allowed to interact with your notifications and access your phone, SMS, contacts, calendar, call logs, and nearby device permissions. So essentially you do need this app in order to use your device. So you'll want to go ahead and say allow here. And here it says allow Galaxy Watch 6 Manager to send you notifications. So here you can choose to allow or not allow. I will go ahead and just say allow for now, but I'm sure you can change this in the settings later as well. And I'm not sure if it's actually needing me to say continue again, so I'll just tap continue. Okay, so now we have some Google Terms of Service. 
uh, by continuing to agree to the Google Terms of Service and Terms below. So usage and diagnostic reports, you can help Wear OS by automatically sending diagnostic and device usage data to Google. So if you don't want to do this, you can turn this off. Uh, location, your watch may use the location from your phone or the watch if available. So if you want to leave this on, you can. I'm not 100% sure if this is really necessary, but usually <laughs> they want all the things they can get. So I want my watch to function completely. So I'll go ahead and leave this on again. I'm sure you can turn this off later if you find you don't need it. And you are uh, agreeing to automatic updates and can't really opt out of that. So if you're okay with your selections, go ahead and tap I agree. So it's saying Samsung may automatically download and install software, software updates when your watch is charging and has more than 30% battery life available. You will be notified before each update is installed and you can check the contents of each update from your Galaxy wearable app. So it looks like you can choose to update manually or get automatic updates. Um, for now, I guess I'll go ahead and say get automatic updates. So now it's getting your watch ready. This might take a few minutes. I'm not sure what exactly it's doing here, but I guess it's just applying all of my selections. And now it's getting my Google account information. Again, might take a few minutes. So I am signed into a Google account on this Samsung phone. So they're wanting me to uh, make sure this is the account I want to use. So that is the account I want to use. So I'll go ahead and say next. If your screen says you need to sign into an account, go ahead and do that now. You also don't seem to be required to do that at the moment, so you could also skip, but it's probably something that they're going to nag you about later, so you might as well sign in now. So I'll go ahead and say next for my selection. So it's asking me to unlock with my fingerprint or pin. All right, so it's signing in probably to the Google account. So just verifying that information and again might take about a minute and now it's checking for Google Play all right so it's talking about some apps that they want to install on the watch so if you don't want to install anything you can just uncheck these two, or you can just say skip. Um, I'll probably go ahead and allow Spotify because I'll probably want to use that. I don't really care about, eh. let's say you might want to add WhatsApp, you can do that. Um, other things I'm probably not going to worry about at the moment. You can always install more apps on your watch later. So I'll go ahead and say continue. All right, now automatic watch backup. This is new this year. Uh, your watch data and files will be backed up periodically when your watch is connected to your phone, making it easier to set up a new watch or restore your watch after resetting. We use Smart Switch to save these backups to your phone. So I'll go ahead and tap next. So now it's basically probably asking for your permission to use this app. So you most likely will want to use this app because it sounds like it's a good thing to back up your watch data to your phone automatically. So I'll go ahead and tap continue. And it's letting us know that Smart Switch uses these required permissions. It does require pretty much <laughs> any permission you might need on your phone. And it will not let you use this unless you agree to all of them. So I'll go ahead and say allow. Now it says it's checking for Smart Switch on my watch. And again, it wants to allow some more permissions. So I'll go ahead and say allow. All right, so now set your wearing preferences. So you can choose your wrist and button position for how you'll wear your watch. So if you're gonna wear it in the standard, you would have it on your left hand with the buttons on the right of the screen. That's how this is set up now. But you could also have the buttons on the left side of the screen and you could wear the watch on either wrist with 
any of those positions. So you can tap here to choose which wrist you're going to wear it on and which positioning of the buttons and then go ahead and tap next. And here it's reminding you that this does have a full color always on display and it seems to be on by default, but you can turn this off in settings. It does use significantly more battery. So if you want more battery life out of your watch, this is one setting you'll want to turn off. So I'll go ahead and say next. And get help in emergency. This is the emergency SOS feature. It's letting you know that you can press the home button on your watch five times in a row and it will call emergency services. And you can also turn on hard fall detection to automatically call emergency services if you have a hard fall. So that's something we can customize later on in these settings. I'll go ahead and say next for now. And tracking your daily activity, just letting you know it can do this. So I'll go ahead and tap next. And this is also a sleep tracker. So you can wear your watch at night to get sleep detailed records of your sleep. And you can go ahead and tap next. And they have a new feature this year that's getting your heart rate zone guidance while you are running. If you're a walker or a hiker, unfortunately, it seems like this is only for running exercises. So hopefully they um, get this going, this feature on non-running workouts in the future. But for now, it's just for runs. So I'll go ahead and tap next. And they also have some advanced running metrics. So I'll go ahead and tap next. And you can get notified when an irregular heart rhythm is detected. So your watch and phone will notify you if your watch detects one hour of an irregular rhythm that might indicate atrial fibrillation or AFib. You do need Samsung Health Monitor on your phone to have this uh, to be notified. So if you're not using a Samsung phone, I don't think you can install the Samsung Health Monitor. So that's one thing to note that this is a Samsung phone only feature. And now it says that it is finishing up and again might take a few minutes. If you if yours is taking a while, you can tap here for looking through the tips and the user manual, but it looks like mine went pretty quickly. And it looks like I'm all set and ready to go. It does have connection to my watch six. And eventually we should see something. There we go. It says starting now on the display of my watch. And over here, it does say, since I'm on a Samsung phone, monitor your heart health quickly and easily. Install Samsung Health Monitor on your phone now. So if you're interested in the irregular heart rhythms and or the ECG app and or blood pressure, if you're in a country that Samsung has approval for blood pressure, which it does not have approval for blood pressure in the United States. But if you're in a country that it does have, those are three features that the Samsung Health Monitor app will help you with. So I'm going to go ahead and say download the app. All right. So if this is your first time opening Galaxy Store, you might have to say continue. And looks like we can just tap on install. I'm going to click out of this. It's going to continue and it's installing. And I'll go ahead and go here on the watch screen here. You can press the start button to take a tour of your watch and we'll go through all the navigational gestures and whatnot. Um, I'm for right now going to go ahead and skip that. It does want to tell you about notifications though, so you probably have to swipe here and look at your notifications. And you can also get more tips and review the manual by clicking here. I'm going to tap the top button here to go back to the clock face. And it looks like we can open the Samsung Health Monitor here. Let's see what this app has for us. It says, connect to a mobile network to activate Samsung Health Monitor's feature. Uh, so I'm guessing you cannot do this over Wi-Fi. So I might have to do this in another video then. They probably want to make sure 
the country you're in is approved for that. So I guess I will delve into the Samsung Health Monitor app in a future video. So for now, we can go back to the uh, Wear Galaxy wearable app here. And again, you can tap here for more tips. And this is how you can get to your watch settings. There are a lot of more settings here that you can access here from your phone. Um, you can also wake up your watch and we pull down from the top to access the quick panel here. You can also get to the settings here and scrolling down, looking at all these things. So one thing you may want to do is tap on display and then it's up to you if you want to disable the always on display because it says always on display will keep the screen on all the time and this does use more battery. You can also turn off the uh, raise wrist to wake if you really want to save some more battery because sometimes that comes on when you didn't actually want to see the screen. So I'll do another uh, video going into great detail for how to use your Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, including changing the clock faces and other customizations. But for now, I think I'll leave this video as it is. If you found this video helpful, could you please give it a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing if you want to see more Galaxy Watch tutorial videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.